October 14, 2015, Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Loisel? Mr. Hebert? Present. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Richards? Here. Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hopefully our meeting won't last as long as the debate last night. Um, the, uh, just for some housekeeping, uh, appeal number 2554, it's a variance appeal by Wilkers, 35, uh, Winslow Homer Road is untabled per the applicant's request, that will be coming back, uh, assuming the next meeting. So if anybody's here for that, uh, you can leave. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of September 9th. 2015. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve as presented. Second. We have a second all the way down at the end. Any discussion on the motion? No. Okay, all in favor? <coughs> That's unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll jump right into uh, the first appeal. It's appeal number 2539. It's a reapproval of a May 2015 variance appeal by Joseph Charlie and Doherty, 16 Jones Creek Drive, Assessor's Map, U22, parcel 08. And, uh, why don't we jump in with your question? Your own comment, sir. Uh, yeah, this is basically a uh, revisit of a previously approved variance um, that um, was um, unintentionally let to expire. Um, variances do have to be recorded within 90 days, according to Maine statute. Uh, and so, Mr. Doherty realized that he had not um, had not recorded the variance at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. So he's reapplying for the variance. Um, as I understand it, no changes are proposed from the original variance that was approved back in May. Thank you. Uh, anybody representing to speak on this? Feel free to take the microphone, state your name, address, and <coughs> circumstance. Sure. <coughs> Joe Doherty, 16 Jones Creek Drive. And um, so as was noted by uh, Mr. Longstaff, we had, we had brought this matter to the board in, in May and received a um, unanimous vote to approve the, the variance and paperwork oversight on my part <laughs> um, in the flurry of all the other activities and paperwork that was going on. We, we simply neglected to file within the, the appropriate time within that 90 days. So that required us to come back in front of the board. The, the project itself, the proposed project, consists of the demolition of the existing uh, single-family structure that's on the property today and construction of a new single-family uh, dwelling upon the same, the existing foundation. Um, the supporting documents that we've provided to you today are, um, as was noted just a moment ago, they're identical to what was sent to you and provided to you in May. Um, the only changes since May are that we've since uh, submitted um, to the town uh, for a demolition permit, which we've received. We've uh, talked to DEP and received their approval on the, the proposal as it was made to this board. There were no, no changes. Congratulations. Um, and uh, the sub we submitted the building permit, the building permit application, which is when we realized that we had not filed as we needed to within the 90 days. So the town is already in receipt of all the other documentation that's needed for the, for the building permit. Um, we had planned to start this project in mid-September, so the house has actually been vacant since early September and, and some of the initial preparations for demolition of the existing property were already underway. Um, of course, as soon as we, we found out that we had this issue, we immediately ceased um, from doing anything else until we could come in front of the board again. Great. And a variance appeal doesn't matter if they've started the process technically. I don't want to get into a trap of the technicality of whether we've started it's not all the four criteria on variance. So unlike that special exception which would say if they've commenced. Right. Yeah. So we're okay with that. But I just wanted to in case there's a trip there that would have caused a problem. So okay. Not enough not enough activity has occurred that it yeah. would it would matter at this point. Thank you. Yeah, when I say preparation, I mean we we just pulled all our belongings out of the house and, and pulled a few fixtures off the wall, that kind of stuff. 
Um, I want to be respectful of the board's time since many of the members have already heard this. So if, if I could ask for some guidance. I don't sure. I, actually, I'd, I'd like to actually propose something to the board. Technically, this is the new appeal and should be heard as such. Uh, however, all but one member here, I believe, was at the last meeting, if I remember correctly. That does not mean anything. But what I would suggest we do, if the board is at the board's will, is that we take the minutes from that previous meeting, apply it to this meeting, and vote on that, as opposed to rehashing the material we've rehashed before. Uh, does anybody have an objection to that? If anybody does, then I won't do it. But if everybody feels <coughs> comfortable with that, then I move that we take the agenda from the minutes, the minutes from uh, mm -hmm. May 12, May May 15th hearing, and apply that to this. Reaffirm the findings from that day. Um, so uh, I'd second that. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. How's that for saving time? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I appreciate it. Uh, save, nice. save me from, <laughs> from some talking as well. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good thank, night. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Next appeal is appeal number 2560. It's a special exception appeal by Lindsay Dimmick. Uh, I'm sorry, Dimonick. 15 forecaster way assessor's map R78 parcel 507. And Ms. Longstaff, any comments on this one? Uh, again, this, let's see, this is a special exception appeal for a home occupation. Um, in my staff comments, I had mentioned that the applicant had not at, at the time uh, demonstrated that not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area was being used for the home occupation, although I had had a discussion with her on that, <coughs> and I understood that it, it wouldn't be, but it, none of the evidence that I was able to, that was submitted and I was able to forward to you showed yeah, that. so thorough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss a thing. Uh, so I just wanted to raise the issue that she had subsequently sent me um, a plan that shows the area that she intends to use for the home occupation. If I can quickly bring it up here for you. Let's see, it's upside down. <coughs> Could you put in a, an order for a mouse for me? Yep. See, there's a purpley shaded area, and look at this. I'm going to point to it. Purple shaded area right there, yeah. and I believe I'll let I'll let Mrs. Dimonick explain, but uh, that is the uh, area that she intends, I think, to use, and it is clearly less than 20%. It's also in an unfinished part of the basement, so it really doesn't matter anyway because unfinished attics or basements or, or garages don't count as. 20% of the floor area, but just wanted to make sure that everybody understood <coughs> place. If you take the microphone, uh, state your name, address, and what you're trying to accomplish, and we'll go from there, okay? Sure. Uh, my name is Lindsay Dimonick, and my address is 15 Forecaster Way in Scarborough, and I am applying for a special exemption to have a home floral studio in my basement. Um, it's a business that I moved hoping to move to Maine that I owned and operated in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for five years out of my home. Um, and I only do special events, so I work with lots of brides and grooms and uh, occasionally baby showers or the random sad funeral occasionally. But no clients ever come to my place of business. I work with them wherever it's convenient for them um, to try to to make it easy on those people that are planning these life events. Um, so no business happens at the home except for the actual arrangements themselves, and I actually pick up all of my products myself, so n no major deliveries related to the business. Is that kind That's of very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, why don't uh, we start off with any questions from the board? And then when I open the public hearing, do we have any vo uh, letters or forms? We have no. Uh, in the public hearing, anybody from the public wish to speak on this? Uh, I'm still dying to see people bring in examples of their work. We've got to work on that. 
Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. 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 You want me to make that a requisite? <laughs> <laughs> it should be item Z. Okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Especially well, if it's food items. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say flowers for your spouses. Yeah, we, we blew it on the one with the, uh, the, 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 the Japanese sushi chef. Sushi yeah. chef. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's just jump right into the field requirements. You've done a great job of packaging this. It makes it a lot easier for us, so thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It makes it a lot easier for you, too. Some of my answers are very concise. So, if so you have what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read in the question. If okay. you could read in the answers for the record, okay? Do you want me to expand on the answers? Or you're welcome to if you'd like to, or okay. it, you, it doesn't really matter. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Chairman, you have the wrong appeal thank in front you. of you. Thank you. Good catch. The answer's being done. Maybe on that one. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would. Okay. Let's Probably jump in. not to the appellant. This is use will not create uns unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. But um, none of the above are produced by the creation of floral arrangements. Um, if I use any preservatives, they are safe um, for disposal down the drain. I work with pretty much all natural organic elements and avoid chemicals whenever possible. Uh, you're on sewer or septic? Sewer. Okay. Uh, those use do not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All meetings with my clients are done off-site. Uh, I pick up my flowers at the wholesalers myself. Um, deliveries of supplies are minimal, um, probably limited to the no bigger than a bread box. Um, and are delivered by the post office, UPS, or FedEx at most once every other month during the wedding season. And it looks like you have a, a hammerhead in your driveway. It makes it pretty easy to turn around. Is that right? For truck? I have a. Uh, like a looks like you got a way to. Oh, yeah, we have an extra spot to the side. Yeah. Um, and our street is a cul de sac, so they can just completely turn around completely. Those use not create this public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially different <coughs> degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. So I said no, it will not. Um, to expand on that, nothing I use is combustible. There's no fire um, or chemicals that pose that risk. Um, and knowledge of there being a business on site, I don't think would imply to anyone that there's a large amount of cash or valuables on site that would warrant in the interest of my home. Produce will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supply. So no, it will not. I don't grow anything on site. There's no gardening going on. Um, all the water I use is delivered in vases or soaked up by foam, and the rest is just um, manageable by the, the drain. We have a large laundry sink down there. And the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. <coughs> yes, correct. And you're not in a shoreland zone? No, I'm not. And uh, you own the property? I do, with my husband. Okay. And uh, <coughs> last, you have financial and technical ability to meet the standards of we just said. And um, it's consistent with com uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Absolutely. So just in and out. Just me. Just you doing that. So you're not going to have any employees? <coughs> not at this time. Okay. And when you say not at this time, uh, if you'd need to come back to the yep. board if you ever have employees. Yep. Let's go to the section on uh, in home businesses. And we can get there first. Okay, great. 
uh, section 9 uh, V, page of that section 37, uh, for those playing at home. The uh, occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal residence or within the building accessory to there too. And you're yeah. doing this in your basement. Mm -hmm. The home occupation shall be clearly uh, incidental and secondary to the use of dwelling of the unit for residential purposes. And Ms. Longstep's already said it's less than 20%, so that makes it pretty incidental. Right. So, <coughs> no more than one person who is not a resident of the property shall be employed in the home occupation. So, th that's okay with you? Fine with me. Okay. Uh, exterior signage shall be, do, do you want, you probably don't want no exterior, exterior signage. signage. Okay. Uh, there shall be no exterior display. Um, you want to put flowers out in front of you. That's no. gray, and it's you know, people put flowers in front of the doors. Um, but the displays are different. Yeah. Um, there shall mm -hmm. be no uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not limited to offensive noises, vibrations, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. No. Yeah. And you're not going to generate any traffic that's uh, increased in volume. Uh, to create traffic hazards or disturb residential character of the neighborhood. And then t you have off street parking, and I asked about the turnaround that you yep. made, and you said that. Um, you lose your less than 20%. Uh, the space is going to be in the basement, and um, you aren't going to have any retail sales. No. So that doesn't affect Section 10, and Section 11 is relevant, Section 12 is relevant. So, uh, why don't I, uh, any voters on this? No. I've asked and they asked you that already. But yep. No, why, don't I, why don't I go to the board for questions and comments? We go in question, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, it's around uh, <coughs> question E, um, which is the compatibility with the existing uses in the neighborhood. Just a couple questions on that. Sure. Uh, you don't have any plan for outside storage, I believe you said that. Not at all. Because they're floral arrangements and wouldn't be conducive to selling them. Yeah, I don't. I get rid of them as soon as they're made. Uh, and while you're making them up, <coughs> what kind of volumes do you have on hand for base product to make those arrangements? If you can give me an idea on volume. Um, like the number of stems of flowers? I know you're going to have different or types of flowers. Yeah. Uh, do you plan on having bushels of them or small volumes of them? What's the plan around, you know? So if I order the flowers um, from like a wholesaler that mm -hmm. ships them <coughs> in boxes. Mm -hmm. um, How many boxes would you plan I'd on having? I've got three boxes about the size of this podium. Okay. I mean. Nope, that makes sorry. sense. <laughs> nope. We don't deal much in square footage and flowers. And then you probably have foam and. I have foam. I have materials that I keep on site, right. but everything is contained in that highlighted portion of my basement sure. um, storage shelves, all of the containers that I keep as part of my um, like collection that brings clients to me because mm -hmm. I have a large like, um, amount of like vintage silver and milk glass, but everything fits in that space. And ev even when I'm arranging and have flowers on site, it's still all within that space. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any questions from the board? Comments? Or a motion? Go away. Move to approve uh, appeal number 2560 as presented. Seconded. Any discussion on the motion? I get the second time I can't do it. So all in favor? That's unanimous. There you go. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you business. guys. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to Scarborough. Thanks. <laughs> we are Patriots fans here though. Okay, <laughs> 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 hey, from Vermont? Okay, you're okay then. All right. <laughs> 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 you're welcome. Take care. Appeal number twenty five sixty one. It's a special exception appeal by Christian Lebrecht. 23 Tapley Road, Sisters Map R1, Parcel 8B. And again, Ms. Longstaff, anything you'd like to uh, <coughs> discuss on this one? Yeah, now that I caught you with the wrong one, I. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I never there it is. check. I attached it to the <laughs> other one. I can only look after one of us at the same time. Um, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, Deal, another special exception home occupation. This one's on, at 23 Tapley Road. Um, the applicant has put together um, a pretty detailed package. Uh, again, the same criteria that you just 
reviewed would be in play here. Okay, very good. Uh, do we have somebody representing? Great, if you could do me a favor, take the stand microphone, just state your name, address, and we'll get you through it. My name is Christina Labreck. I live at 22 Tapley Road in Scarborough. I am a licensed massage therapist. I currently have a business in Buxton, Maine. Um, I own space there. I'm an independent practitioner, and I'm looking to move my business into a space in my home uh, here in Scarborough. Very good. Okay. And um, any letters or phone calls on this? There was none. Uh, from the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing part of the meeting and uh, come to the, uh, the board with any immediate initial questions or comments. Okay, why don't we jump right into the standards of the special exception. Uh, so I'll read into it and then you can just read what you've written and we'll go from there, okay? okay. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Uh, my massage therapy business will operate within my existing home, which has fun functioning sewage system and on-site laundry. We have a septic system. Our recommended cleaning and sanitizing procedures of equipment are followed while minimizing use of known hazardous chemicals and cleaning products. Very good. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Uh, my clients are seen one at a time which eliminates any foreseeable traffic issues. Ample parking already exists in our current driveway, which is 250 feet plus in length. Um, and question for you on that, how, how many applicants do you see in a day typically? Uh, generally only, no more than two clients in a day, and that would be only on a weekend. Generally <coughs> one client uh, in the evening on a, week, on a weekday. Okay, and what's, what's the latest time of your operation? Uh, I do not accept any uh, appointments after 6 p.m. Okay. And you're okay with us putting that on the record? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we also ask questions? Are we going to wait? Sure, feel free if you. Uh, with this, I think it's easier just to go ahead. Okay. Uh, how many spots of parking are up near the residence? We have, there's a, there's a square in front of the garage. We park our vehicles in the garage at all times. So we could fit. Uh, Two, maybe three vehicles in there. Is there a turnaround uh, portion of the driveway? There so, is. Okay. Yes, we use that. Okay, excellent. And uh, you don't foresee anybody backing down 250 feet to go out on the road, correct? No, I don't advise people to do that. We ask them to turn around. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, the um, proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood require a substantially greater degree of fu municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, my clients are seen one at a time and all new clients are screened appropriately prior to their appointment. Uh, existing neighborhood home and professional safety practices are followed. Okay. And those use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supply. Minimal water use is needed for each client session uh, with any waste disposed in our existing system. And the proposed use will, not, will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, we're not going to be needing to make any exterior structural changes. Transition time is allotted between client sessions to prevent more than one client there at any given time. A small business sign will be installed at the end of our driveway within the uh, code um, specifications up to square feet, I believe it's eight. And it's six square feet. Right. And it, it, when it's six square feet, it doesn't mean squ six square feet with balloons and sun. Right. It's going to be, that, that's actually more. six square feet. Right. Yeah. It's really important to define that. A, a sign is all of its components. We've had different interpretations of that over the time, so just want to make sure you're comfortable with it. Okay. Um, and then we'll go right into, again, the performance standards for in-home occupation. Uh, the occupation and profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal dwelling or within a building accessory there, too. And let me get the, I just want to get the picture up there for a second. Is there a special space in the house that you'll be using its ability? Yes. 
the OIC right to have a treatment room. Mm -hmm. So. <coughs> Patient shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. And if you could do me a favor, speak that out loud right. just so it's yes. on the record. Uh, no more than one person who is a, not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Yes, correct. It's just going to be yourself. That's myself. Okay. Uh, exterior signage is permitted uh, under section uh, 11, I'm sorry, exception 12. Subsection E, which basically says you can have a six square foot sign. Is it attached to the house or on the road? I mean, we'll double check that yeah, before we get done. If you could look up for me. I think that's on the road, Mark. Could you do me a favor and look that up while we're talking on it? I just want to make sure I give you the right information. Uh, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no, no other exterior indication of home occupation or variation from a residential character of the principal dwelling, uh, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of the ordinance. Uh, that really applies to a lot, it does not apply to lobster traps, so I'm assuming that doesn't apply. Right. Right. Uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Uh, traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Are most appointments an hour? Excuse me? Are most appointments an hour? Or? Uh, up to an hour and a half. Okay. Um, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users. So you only have one at a time, you have no employees, and it looks like you have a hammerhead that allows people to go out, yes. and you tell them to do that. So, uh, the home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area. Um, Mr. Longstaff, have you done the, the measurements on that? It yeah, looks less than 20. Square right here, okay, great. Uh, and let's see, home occupations may, you're not doing any retail sales or anything, you sell potions or whatever, lotions or... Oh no, not at this time. Rocks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's out of my league. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, one, on the, one on the end of the driveway. It's chair. And, uh... Sorry. It's one on the end of the driveway. One on the end of the driveway. And that has to be how many feet off the road? Mr. Lozo, where are you finding that? Uh, 1023, I think. Section 12. 1023. 1023. Um, Section 12. Section 12. Section 12. Page. Page 10 of 23. Yeah. Move my shirt from I should have done my homework on this beforehand, I'm sorry. Uh, it's in the chart. Actually, it can be anywhere on the lot. It's just going to be six square feet. Right. Just I don't believe it's on the dwelling. Though. I think it says on the lot, so that means off the pro off the building. One per lot. It can be a it can be a wall sign. It could be. Okay. Yeah. Um, for home occupation, it. Uh, yeah. It could it could be either. Okay. Section E. I just want to see. Okay. So, just so you know what we're reading here, is it uh, home occupation? The only, the only thing it's, it talks about it is uh, Turn right here. In an RF zone. Oh, she's RF. Yeah. Well, all, all of them. All, all of zones. zones. It's the same square footage, but there's no, but there's no stipulation. Great. The only other place. Excuse me, no, B1, B3, 
signs identifying the name and address of, and address of professionals that permitted home occupation are lawfully existing non-conforming home occupation are allowed provided that the home does not exceed six square feet in area and is non-illuminated. Those are the two. And this can't this can be illuminated or you can't it can't be illuminated. Cannot. Yes, non-illuminated. Okay. So kind of put that in perspective and I'll translate to know what you can do. You can have up to a, it can be three by two, it can be one by six, it can, as long as it's no more than six square feet, including the whole sign. And why that's important, just so you understand, is oftentimes we found that we soon we see banners, we see Christmas lights, we see all kinds of things. It's six square feet, attractive sign that's consistent with the neighborhood, and uh, as long as you're comfortable with that, that's that's perfect. There's no requirement from the road other than probably your mailbox. At six square feet, I mean, the setback from the road is just watch the plow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the plow really is going to determine it. So, um, does that work for you? Okay. That works fine. I'm just trying to think of. I have the mailbox set up right now with like a wooden post, so I'll have to figure out. You don't have to put it on it, the mailbox. It, yeah, it, it'll require a signed permit, so we can discuss all that yeah. when we come in for okay. it. We don't need to belabor it tonight. Okay. Okay, so we've gone through all the criteria. Why don't we come back to the board for questions, comments, and motion. I've got one question for Mr. Longstaff. Um, in a home occupation like this where they're actually going to have people going inside, and how many bedrooms in the home? Uh, three bedrooms. Three bedrooms on a septic? Does that affect it? Do you have to check the size for that for she's not she's not um, she's not using water consumption as part of the home occupation and so, so the no, no more than normal use of a yeah bathroom? it wouldn't be it would be negligible use okay um, so it wouldn't add it really wouldn't add any additional flow uh, other than no different than if you had a guest in your home right okay thank you that's it Other questions from the board pretty straightforward I'll go have a motion To make a motion to approve 2561, appeal 2561. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's the game we end. Thank you very much. Good luck with your occupation. Appeal number 2561 is a special exception appeal by uh, uh, Christina Lebrecht. Oh, 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 I'm no. sorry. I'm going to move on. I'm uh, wrong. losing it here. <laughs> We're skipping that one. All right, there we go. Oh, Thank right. you. Like, speaking, oh. of, speaking of being confused, right. there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an appeal number 2562. It's back to difficulty variant request by Peter and Lorraine Talbot. Three Pinewood Circle. Assessor's map, U17, parcel 75. And long step, any, any you'd like to share with this one? Um, again, it is a practical difficulty variance because the property is not in shoreland zone or the floodplain, so they, they, they can apply for the practical difficulty. Um, the applicant wishes to raise the structure, uh, tear it down, and uh, replace it with another single family dwelling. Um, the lot is relatively constrained, uh, making it difficult to meet setbacks and get um, their required square footage. Um, the building coverage uh, that they're proposing will increase the existing from 17.8 to 20 percent, which is the, the allowed uh, maximum building coverage in the R2 district. Um, and I think from there, uh, the applicant can probably present her her case and answer your questions. Very good, thank you. Feel free to take the microphone. Did you lose, did you win the bet or lose the bet? No, I guess you're both going to do, okay. I, I was wondering if you drew straws. <laughs> I'm going to let him do the heavy lifting. 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Lorraine Talbot. My husband, Peter, <laughs> is shy. Um, we live at 3 Pinewood Circle. Um, I am going to read this because I didn't do so well in public speaking. Um, Not worried so about it. As you notice, neither have I. So <laughs> feel free to talk as you need. So we, uh, we did prepare a little opening um, statement that we'd like to share with the board. We are longtime residents of Scarborough. We purchased Three Pinewood Circle on June 1 of this year as a part of a plan to downsize. Um, now that our two sons are grown and gone, 26 and 22 years old, and they're on their own. Um, of course, we hope they'll come back to visit um, no, often. Not too long. I, often, <laughs> right. Um, with maybe family in tow at some time in, down the road. So when we bought this property, our plan was to do a major renovation of the main house while tearing down the one-car garage and breezeway, which um, are not on concrete foundations, and replacing them with a new two-car garage with a smaller breezeway. As our plans progressed, it became clear that the proposed renovations to the house were going to cost almost as much as new construction, and equally important, even a full renovation would not fix several of the structural and safety issues with the house, including a concrete block foundations with significant cracking, a wet basement, and steep narrow stair walls. And we did provide some photos in our package to you um, to demonstrate some of these, these <coughs> features of the property that are less than ideal. We concluded that all new construction was the best way to go. When we checked in with code enforcement, we were told that because we were proposing to tear down the existing house and in, in, in its entirety and not building on the existing foundation, we would need to apply for a variance, <coughs> and so that's why we're here this evening. In the package submitted to the board, we believe that we've answered every question and satisfied every requirement for approval of the variance, but we would like to emphasize two things that we feel are relevant. First. Pinewood Circle is a small neighborhood characterized by small houses on small lots. Most of the houses predate the town zoning ordinance. We do not believe that any of the 12 to 15 houses in the neighborhood conform with the setback and lot coverage requirements of the current ordinance. In fact, several of the houses sit on extremely small lots and are situated almost directly on the road. Our house would appear to be one of the closest to conforming on the street and our plans will result in a house that is more in conformance than the existing house. We have spoken personally with most of our neighbors and in general they've been supportive of the plan. Second, the current structures do not conform with the setback requirements of the R2 zone in three places. A pressure treated wooden deck in the rear or north side of the house and the existing garage to the right or east both are approximately five feet into the required 15-foot setback. In addition, the main house is approximately 28 feet from the front lot line, not the required 40. In our plans, the new house and garage are moved more into the center of the lot, which removes the rear and side setback issues. As a result, the only variance we need to request is a front setback variance, uh, a 10-foot reduction from 40 to 30 feet, and the granting of this variance will actually move the house further away from the road. Um, as I stated earlier, the current house is 28 feet from the front lot line, and the new house, if our uh, request is approved, will be required to be at least 30 feet from the front lot line. So to sum it up, we think that our request for the reduction in the front setback requirement is reasonable and benefits all concerned. Of the three existing setback issues, two were corrected and one will be reduced. We hope the board will look favorably upon our request, and we thank you very much. And we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Anything to add? Uh, no, I think she uh, covered it okay. in that introduction. And as I say, I'll, I'll, we'll, we both of us will try to answer other questions you might have. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, any letters or uh, phone calls only? There was none. Okay. I'll open the public hearing. Seeing nobody, I'll close the part of the meeting for the public hearing. And why don't we go right into uh, the requirements. And what I'd like to do as we go along, because this is a, a harder appeal, is I want to stop with each one and have board members ask questions if they'd like, and then we'll continue through. Okay. So we'll make those as part of the findings of time. Mr. Richard. I'd like to mention to the board 
note that I have dealt with the Talbots since their purchase of the property, and there's probably a strong possibility that I could be the contractor, and just wanted to let everybody know that and feel I could be as objective with this case. Everybody's comfortable with that. I'm good with that, Mr. Chair. I'm good. All in favor of leaving switches on position, that's fine. Any disclosure? Just for the record, any time there's a potential for a conflict, it's required by the board member that might feel that way to disclose that potential, and then it's the responsibility of the board to determine whether or not they feel there's a valid reason to recuse themselves, and the board looks at each circumstance individually. You just witnessed exactly what happened with that. That is the requirement of the law, which says that we have to disclose a potential conflict of interest. So thank you for following through on that, and we will continue. Okay, so we're getting the letters. Let's jump right into the requirements, okay? The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Would you like to read an exact quote you have? The unique circumstance is that this lot and house predate the town zoning ordinance. Under the R2 zoning that now exists, the lot is nonconforming. It's 8,000 square feet versus the required 20,000 square feet, and the existing structures are nonconforming. They are too close to the front, rear, and east side lot lines. The lot is 100 feet wide by 80 feet deep. This results in an allowed building envelope under the ordinance of 70 feet by 25 feet deep. This severely restricts the depth of any house that could be built and our ability to build a new house and fix all the safety issues on site. Okay. Board comments or questions on that specific issue? It's not going to be the end of it, but I'd like to get each one as a finding of fact. Yeah, you had mentioned that the foundation was cracked and having some issues. What other type of issues are you having as far as safety? Just relating to the foundation or just house in general? Safety issues. I'd say that the three safety issues that really couldn't be fixed by renovation because we went pretty far down that path with an architect and so on would be the basement foundation with the cracking, also the leaking and sort of general mustiness as well, and water in the basement, although I suppose a T.C. Hafford kind of thing could mitigate that a bit. Then I think the other one that is hardest to correct under the renovation, and this is what was pushing us towards new construction, is the stairwells are extremely steep, extremely narrow, and I'm not even six feet tall and I have to duck to go up. I do believe that if we went the rehab route, which was our original intention, we could have fixed electrical and plumbing and even egress window issues, but the first issues I mentioned just don't seem to be able to be reasonably fixed by rehab. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the service at the house is 6 p.m., so it's out of code to do what we're planning to do. You can't even run a laptop, huh? So we were planning to do that. I mean, that's a big safety thing. Anyway, but those staircases are pretty nasty. And do you have mold or any pieces of these blocks that are protruding out or coming out? I'd say no. It's mostly just lots of cracking that's been patched over the years and newer cracks that have revealed themselves. I'm no mold expert. I don't see mold on cardboard or anything in the basement. It's just generally dark stains on the wall and kind of mildewy. I don't know if it's technical or mold issue. I don't think it is. I'm not an expert. In the picture that shows on the concrete block, that black, that actually looks like black mold, which is very dangerous. Yeah. So did you try washing it off with bleach or anything? We haven't touched it. You don't go down there and breathe? We go down there as little as we can. I mean, I'm not a mold expert, and obviously I'm looking at a picture, but I've seen black mold, and that looks like black mold. And 
I appreciate your candor. Um, but that's also a solid reason for us to look at making the exceptions. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to assume that black mold looks like it looks like it to me. Do you, do you agree with that? Look, you've seen it before. No. <laughs> you don't, that's good to know. You don't think, it's, you don't think I, it is? I don't know that. I, I can't tell by looking at a picture. I just don't know what picture, else it would be there for. It's very, it's, it, it, it could be from a number of different things. It's just very difficult to say. I think, I think it, it probably is reasonable to, to assume if the basement is continually wet that there may not be black mold, but probably some types of mold. Well, some some me remediation classes that I've taken through Surf Pro and things, some of these paintings generally attribute to mold. I don't know if it is mold or not. It's not a really up close picture, but I would say definitely the, the cracks <coughs> are in, you know, in, in water penetration is more of a, an issue. You know, I mean, you can see that as opposed to, as opposed to guessing, guessing what the black <coughs> is. I, I'm not saying it's not mold. I just don't. You it's can't fair. tell. That's fair. <laughs> uh, if I could, one other thing that sort of makes the wet basement even harder is because we're dealing with a house that has virtually no overhang or eaves. And so if I understand the front setback or the setbacks correctly, we really couldn't even extend out our eaves because that would be into the setback. And so it made it hard to get the water away from the house, <coughs> even under renovation. And you, had, you had indicated that you could have uh, 70 feet by, is that right? 70 25. 25. So you're actually using the 70 feet uh, that would be if this was a normal design. And then Correct. you're using 27 feet, right? Two foot impact, was it? Uh, the depth is what? 25. And the depth is 30. That's the eaves now. Right, they're going from a 28 foot to 30 foot setback now on a 40 foot setback. On the front. And the building right. size, how much does the building's uh, size increase from the original home? Uh, does the question have to do with the coverage? <laughs> yeah. I believe the coverage goes from about 1420 to the full 1600, which brings us up to 20% coverage. Yeah. And is the current structure two by four construction? It is. Mr. Chair, that's one of my bigger concerns yeah. with a block foundation, knowing that it's got a two by four wall structure. It's not as rigid as a two by six would be. It's odd to see two by four. So four. put it, it's 1950 structure. I mean, that to me, that that gives them a right under question number one to make the change and say yes. Okay. And we're showing uh, about a 180 square feet increase in size. Is that right? In plan, yeah. For the, uh, for my engineering friends here. Yes. Okay. Um, I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> 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 Any other uh, comments, questions, uh, findings of fact on number one? And we're in number two. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. The granting of the variance will not produce any undesirable changes in the neighborhood. In fact, it will allow us to improve the neighborhood by replacing a rundown cape with a garage and breeze, uh, breezeway that are set on the ground with no foundations, no concrete foundations, with a more attractive cape that's better positioned uh, as a result of the new building being located a few feet west, uh, to the west, more in the middle of the site. Uh, a high quality new house should have a positive effect on the use and fair market value of the abutting properties. I like the fact, uh, just an observation, most of the homes as the pictures show are either um, two story capes, they're, they're mostly, um, at least these pictures show either cape or, or is it uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. So what I like about it is that I don't, I think as opposed to many of these that come through, I would say that they're not trying to maximize. They're not going three stories. Uh, they're, not <laughs> they're not trying to, yeah, I think that's, they're using, it, they're doing a design that's consistent with the neighborhood. I think it's important to put a, a huge uh, colonial in there with a three-car garage as opposed to an attractive uh, 
cake, uh, cake with a dormer, I, I think is positive and tied to that. So I think it's very consistent with uh, the change in the neighborhood. And to add to that by bringing the uh, structure back in more in line on both side setbacks and better on the front setback, it, it is more in line with the character of the neighborhood. I think it's important too. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you're going higher than you were before? Uh, no, it's, it's, we're replacing or hoping to replace a one and a half story cape with a breezeway and, and garage with a one and a half story cape with a breezeway and garage. We may end up being a foot or two higher because we are going to hope for nine foot ceilings on the first floor and I'm not an expert on roof pitch, but if the roof pitch is a normal cape roof pitch, I think we'd only at the most be up a foot or two from uh, where we are now. As far as this board is concerned, I would um, not want that to be a limiting factor in approval if we do approve it and with that with the, uh, the planning department. I, I agree, and I think it's pretty clear they're not trying to get a third floor out of this. They aren't right. trying for that at all. Like so. a floor that doesn't really get exactly. So. Yeah, okay, good. <coughs> all right, so I'll move to the next one. Let's end out to the uh, number two. So number three is the practical di difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, that's correct. The difficulty results really from the lot and the buildings both predating the zoning ordinance, and that's about it. And no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant expect to, except the variance. This is the toughest one for many of us. Uh, but I think the two by four construction and some of the problems in the basement are going to help us. But go ahead. But uh, I'll read what I said here and then maybe we'll have some other comments. Uh, correct. We've looked at all other options, especially rehab. Working with the existing structures, it appears to be impractical and virtually impossible to fix all of the structural and safety issues, which include. Uh, staircases and bedroom egress windows that do not meet code, unsafe electrical wiring, crack block foundation walls, water intrusion, and related issues, lack of foundation under the breezeway and garage, well, and sort of disgusting, pet urine, this is all around the dining room, that not only required uh, removal of carpeting and hardwood flooring, but it also seeped into the studs and uh, subflooring. Uh, your dog? And I'm sure you were no, thrilled that included the photos. Yeah, no, no, no. It was not our, <laughs> we don't have dogs. No, it wasn't our pet. That's <laughs> but, but as I said before, I think that, that we looked extensively at rehab to the extent of spending a fair amount of money on an architect doing the existing floor plan and, and then changing it. And the problem was, uh, though we wanted to go down the rehab route, we just couldn't solve some of the problems. Did you say even with the eaves, if you were going to extend the eaves to take some of the water away, you would put yourself further and out of conformity? Correct. My understanding is the house right now has virtually no eave, maybe a two-inch overhang, which results in water running down the house and through the foundation. And my understanding is we can't put a ladder or whatever you call it to extend the eaves because that's getting further into the front setback or rear setback. Did, did the architect give you an idea of what the cost would be if, if you raised the home, put a foundation under the home and under the breezeway as well as the garage? Did he give you an idea of what that cost would be? The architect did not, no. Okay. Uh, I would think that's going to be a significant amount of money for no value gain except for improving the structure below the structure. Now you've still got a two-by-four home yeah, and you've still got stairwells that are steep. It doesn't stairs. change any of that. So. In fact, you're <laughs> well, you got that 60 well, I kind of let that here because I'm the previous <laughs> owner and I would eliminate this opportunity <laughs> to come through. Um, tied with the, uh, the, all the comments that you made, I, I would tend to agree with everything you said here except the pet hearing because I don't know when that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as far as the, I did want to tie something with this, the feasible alternative, um, the eaves. Do we have I, I, the drawing itself that I can tell? Do you have drawings that show the eaves? Are we are we looking from the from the eaves? Are we looking from the foundation? It's, from the drawing? it's my understanding that the setbacks that have been proposed are from the property lines to the eave lines. Is that is, your, is that your understanding? Correct. So we had that discussion. As an example, if you had a uh, uh, a 28 foot deep house we actually showed it as 30 feet, I think, 
on the, on the plot so plan. So you don't want to split each side? Because that was really, we were told to do it that way to show the coverage. Good. As long as you understand that, that's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, if, you look at, if you look at the numbers, there's a foot or a foot and a half around the foundation extending out in every direction on the plot plan. But I also show that that shows effort on the applicant because it was at 28 feet with no eaves. Now they're going to 30 feet set back on the front with eaves. So that's a three or four foot difference in the front, front edge of that home. Trust me. <laughs> of, the, of the front wall of the house. Correct. Yeah. Other comments from the board on number four? I think it's pretty straightforward, personally. I think it's uh, it's usually one of the harder ones to meet. I think you've done a good job documenting it. Uh, I have to be candid. When I looked at the pictures prior to the meeting, I didn't really understand it. And when you describe the story, it's a lot easier to visualize why you're doing what you're doing. It's, it is deceiving because the exterior of the house no, it's um, fine. Is, is in pretty good shape because it's newer siding, a roof, and replacement windows. But you step inside the house and it's 1950s pretty much. It, it was really built as a yeah. summer camp and it's, it's a little rugged. We, and we had hoped to save it because it has some nice features, but it's, we don't feel it can be. And you take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and this is intended to be year round? Yes. It, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's really pretty difficult to insulate two by four walls uh, to the standards that we need, I think, in this region anyway. Mm -hmm. You really won't see that unless you're in Massachusetts or below. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, Mr. Chair, if I were to summarize, I think they have met their need for um, for covering the feasible alternative question that they looked at rehab significantly, backed out of that, and now they're at a new home. And by doing that, they're now bringing in the side setbacks and the front setbacks. So they're not trying to maximize. I would agree with that. I think they've done exactly what the ordinance so far, or at least so far, uh, what the ordinance has been looking for. I agree. We will continue. Uh, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Uh, Pinewood Circle is a, a small, older local street with approximately 15 homes. We believe that all but one of the homes predate the zoning ordinance. The majority of homes, including the homes immediately to the east and west, are on very small lots where the lot size and building size location are nonconforming. Three Pinewood Circle, our house, is more nearly in conformance than most of its neighbors. Uh, our proposed new construction bring the property, brings the property even closer to conformance by completely removing the setback issues on the eastern and rear sides of the property, as well as reducing the setback issue on the front. And then we just said a photo of the abutting houses are attached. And we're three Pinewood. If, if you look at five Pinewood Circle, uh, that, that house can't have more than a six inch setback from the property line. Um, that's you know, how they were built back then in the 40s and 50s. I, I think that the applicant's done a, a very nice job of trying to conform as much as they can uh, within this property and, as we've stated before, not, not try to overdo it and go up you know, two and a half, three stories. So. Yeah, I think it definitely brings it more in conformance by bringing in both side setbacks and right. the front setback that's more front, in right. compliance than it was before. So, And they haven't gone higher. And that's always what we're looking for is more conformance. And in order to give someone a chance to use their pointer, if you look at the picture, <laughs> 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 you guys said this before. <laughs> 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 If you could go to that one, there's our roughly 10-foot setback. The fence is the property line, and to me, this is the most significant thing. We have we have about a 10-foot thing there between our neighbor's fence and deck, uh, and then our garage, and we will at least be moving that five feet to the left to really get our garage right out of our neighbor's backyard face. To me, that was. The rear setback, that was just someone's backyard, so it wasn't a big deal. Front setback, we're talking just a couple of feet. But that, that right hand or eastern setback is a significant improvement um, for Allie, our neighbor, and she was pretty happy about it. I just want to warn you that if this gets through, you have to go through him to get that thing built. So <laughs> 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 be careful on the pointer, Joe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do agree with it. I think it, you, all board, the board stated it perfectly. The variance that we don't bring the applicant's property more than you need to conform. It's exactly what this is designed for. So 
I feel comfortable with that. Uh, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Uh, correct. The lot is primarily flat with open lawn areas, except along the western lot line. That's between three and five pinewood, um, where there are two large pines as shown on the survey. It is expected to stay that way, except for the addition of some foundation planting. The coverage ratio for the pros buildings meets the 20% requirement, and the proposed paved driveway will cover approximately the same area of the existing driveway. A positive effect on the environment will be the replacement of an old oil furnace with a more modern, environmentally friendly uh, gas furnace. In addition, wood burning fireplace to be replaced by a new gas fireplace. Uh, just to visualize, our driveway that you saw in that picture will be taken out, uh, be at exactly the same size, it'll just be moved five feet to the west or left to obviously line up with the new garage, which has been moved five feet to the west. So same size tar pavement coverage, whatever you call it. Any board comments on that issue? I think that's pretty straightforward. There's no change. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And number seven, you're not in the shoreline zone, which allows us to be able to use this, this uh, type of appeal. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, very well presented, thank you. Uh, we have got on the record the, uh, the comments of the board members as findings of fact. Any board member wish to change any of their findings of fact on any of those specific issues? No. no. Anybody wish to add anything regarding the findings of fact on any of these specific issues? No. Mr. Chair, did we vote on number five? Uh, number five, we haven't voted on any of them yet. Okay. Uh, so we've just basically gone okay. through. Uh, what I wanted to do is initially just get uh, the findings back at the same time so we could okay. be a little bit easier for everybody. Yeah. Um, I'll just kind of summarize what I see, and I think I probably can speak for all of you on this. I, I think this is a classic example of responsible use of the zoning regulations and especially the practical difficulty variance. Uh, I think the documentation is well complete. I do think it's black mold. I'm sticking to it. Uh, <laughs> not that that would matter in the least. I think there's enough reasons to say that this is uh, appropriate. If anybody wants an example of how to do a project and get it through the board, I think this is a pretty successful presentation. Um, and with that, uh, I'll ask for a motion. Uh, move to approve appeal number 2562 as presented. And uh, thank you very much for this presentation. Seconded. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck with your new home. Thank you very much. We set an example for others to come after you. <coughs> very good. Um, Okay, so this, uh, the, uh, do we have any more information on the appeal of the, speaking of maximizing, the appeal that we went, I'm trying to remember the number of it, you went, Vesper Street, Vesper Street. have we heard anything from them? They were supposed Brian to. Brian might know that. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Um, with regard to that one, the, the yes, we've met with the applicants uh, and their designer on fewer than three or four occasions since the last meeting. Um, they're struggling to um, reduce the size of the building and still meet their family needs, which is what I kind of expected was their issue. And, and um, so we, they're still, you know, they've met with um, Mr. Dan Bacon a few times, uh, myself, a time or two, um, we've gone through and rehashed um, what we felt was the board's directive um, on uh, what they were looking for for something that was, for lack of a better term, approvable, mm -hmm. um, and they just haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Now, appeals, just, uh, I don't know the answer to this because I haven't had this happen. Traditionally, we allow an appeal <coughs> to be appeal to be moved one or two months out. We left this to be appealed. We didn't specify specifically. Is there a regulation that says at some point this appeal has to be refiled? Um, 
it seems like 90 days would be consistent with the recording. I think the mistake that we may have made, that the board may have made, is not putting a timeline on the tabling of that appeal. That's correct. And so whenever, maybe just for future reference, whenever the board wishes to table something, they probably ought to set a date when that appeal will come back to the board. So depending on the nature of the missing information or what's needed, you might not be able to get that in one month and be back the next, or they may not be able to get it submitted in time to be on the agenda for the next month. So as a general rule, unless it's something very minor, you'd almost want to set it for 60 days out or the following month. And they're not getting good faith as far as coming in. They're still trying. It's not lying dormant at this point. That is appeal number 2555. 2555. Okay. I don't know if there's a point at this time to make a motion other than that we're just making it aware. At some point, the time frame will need to require, and I would argue, and I don't know this, maybe for the next meeting we can get an answer, but I would think at some point there's a trigger by code that says an appeal has to be reapplied for. Yeah. I haven't, I've looked, and usually that would be spelled out in your charter or in your board bylaws, and it really isn't. So then we'd go to, you know, normal board procedures in the MMA manual, and I'm not sure that that's going to provide much guidance either. So I can certainly ask that question to the town attorney, what's a reasonable time for a sort of a tabling to be out there. I know under subdivision rule, I think it's like six months or something like that. There is a time frame from the time you have your first sketch plan meeting, preliminary plan meeting, to the time you bring a final plan back. I don't know that we have anything specific, but we can certainly look into that. Again, I think that problem gets resolved when you say, you know, we're going to table this for two months or three months, and so you set the date for the, you know, January, February, March meeting, whatever that month would be, and that goes into the minutes. My biggest concern is I didn't want, because of the way the rule says about 90 days to record, I was worried that it was 90 days because we have to record within 90 days. It's only from the time you approve it. So I was kind of saying, well, I don't want them to be in a situation where by not knowing or not disclosing, we've put them in a bad situation. But at this point, it would be helpful to at least get some kind of a position. I mean, while you're on the topic, what about this request to table until April? It was April. I mean, that's, theirs has been tabled for two months now. They're asking to table it until April. I mean, how does the board feel about that? I don't think that's appropriate because I think the applicants, the neighbors could even have changed in that time frame. That's a long time. And my personal opinion is that that is not appropriate. Can you explain why? It's not about, let me explain why. It's not about not getting your permit payment in. It's about going too long and the public not having the right to access that. Or the advertising process of advertising that you're going to come before the board again. That's really, my issue is probably twofold. And it really revolves around the neighbors. And you're right. Tabling out that long, you could have a change in neighbors. Somebody else could buy a home right next to them. You forget. Some of these people may not be in the area and, in fact, are out of state in April. Now, that happens a lot in that area. And that's just how life works. But it would be very easy to forget. They're not going to get a letter from us saying that's been tabled. Correct? Correct. So they're not going to know this has been tabled. As far as they're concerned, they're going to assume this has been dropped. And that's what I would assume. So I'll assume that they'll assume the same as I do. They're smarter than I am. They live on that street. But that being said, I just think that is an unreasonable time frame. And what to do with it, 
I'd suggest that they have to not necessarily go through the fees again, except for the notice to the neighbors again, I think is reasonable. I don't know what the, That's what I was going to ask you about. And I don't know what you guys think of that from a, from a town and legal point of view. I don't think it needs to be re-advertised necessarily. We didn't get any letters from the last one, did we? Taylor, Taylor could you do us a favor and mm -hmm. follow up? Could they you actually got, they had letters in favor of. In favor, right. In favor. Could, could we just get the, any documentation from that for the next meeting? For the Chester and Brooker. Yeah, and then my, my suggestion would be if, in fact, there's no negatives, then we do a letter to the abutters, but not do a letter, not do a, a filing. Well, we, you know, I mean, the way I look at it is I agree. I, I, I feel like it's a long time out. That was the request. And the request I'm was that you brought it, up. It, it wasn't it wasn't for any reason other than to try to meet our time frames for when permits expire and approvals expire. One of the things I would like to see amended is I believe that the six month approval expiration date is ridiculous. I think once you guys, once somebody's gone to the trouble of coming in here and making a presentation, and you guys have come to the, gone to the trouble of, of discussing it and, and doing your findings and conclusions and approving it, that thing ought to be good for a year. I agree. You I know, to, me, to me, because, and, and especially here where you've got a majority of the approvals are in beach communities where they have these sort of unwritten you know, standards. three or four months of construction. Yeah, where <laughs> there's a prohibition on construction throughout the summer months, and it's Maine, and, <laughs> right, and sure. that's when we build. Right. And and so to me, our six month approval it it jives well with our building permit thing, but they're really two separate issues. Your approval should be good for a year. When you apply for your building permit is is the more strategic thing. Is mm -hmm. that our purview or is that state driven or, or town it's driven? It's certainly not straight state driven. It's in our charter. It says all permits and approvals are good for six months. It's in, ch in section four. But now to the change the charter, year. you have to go to vote, right? Well, it's in our charter for the zoning board, not the. Not okay. The well, it's town. actually an only in the ordinance. It's only in the ordinance. So it would only be an ordinance amendment. So, Brian, do we. I think it I would think only be an ordinance. Right. So what you're saying is that this board does not have the approval, the, the authority to extend that under certain circumstances. If Extension is a different animal. The approval is good for six months. Mm -hmm. They can get an extension in if they apply in writing for good cause. Yeah. You may extend that approval for another six months. I so essentially, you can give them a year, but, but it's not, not inherent in I the I approval. I guess what I was saying, what I meant was that at the time that they come in and get the approval, if they foresaw that there could be a problem because of the, the, of the winter schedule and everything, could we at that time give them eight, nine months or it's whatever? It's not set that up that way. Yeah, okay. I understand. So we don't have that authority. Yeah. Yeah. The other problem is they're double jeopardy to some extent because it really, unlike the one we, we chose as a board to just make, a, I think, a very intelligent decision on number one and, and use the previous and just move on, it could be very easy, especially on a split vote, that uh, the board changes just enough so that some, they've got all their work done, all their plans done. They won on a split vote, and that's, that's how it works. And they come back and find out that the split vote goes the other way. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll bring this up to the ordinance committee and then get back to the, to the, uh, the board about that. What is the board's pleasure on the request until April. I agree. I think it's too long. You asked for documentation. Yeah, I think if we get, uh, but I, I guess the question I would have is until we've got a rule, which we really don't have, that I, that I can think of, I, I think we can control it the way we want to because there's no rule. So I would say, wh wh when did this first come to us? To me, it's six because months. They need to redisclose. They need to re. They need to re. I wouldn't charge them the fees for application. I would charge the, them the, the fees. The problem is the application fee. I think, as I understand it, barely covers the cost of advertising. But you're not going to. You're, you're saying we don't have to. 
Well, that's my question. So I, for each kind, I don't know that you can mix and match that. Yeah, right. I think it's either all or nothing. Right. And I think that realistically, after six months of cabling, that I, my personal opinion, without further guidance from the regulation, is it would be appropriate to re advertise. What we can do, what, I, what I'll propose is then, if, if that's your decision, is that that's too long a, a time to table and you'd rather have them withdraw. If they withdraw, you haven't voted on it. Right. right. So they still have the right to come back within a year's time mm -hmm. at correct. any point and reapply. Yeah. Right. And so we can salvage all the materials so that they don't have to reprint everything. That's great. Um, we already have the abutters list. I would I would just simply have them withdraw and reapply for April's meeting and resubmit the same stuff that they've already gone to the cost and effort of reproducing. I and, um, would agree with that. And, yeah. and, and I mean, yeah. and just, just pay the fee and do the advertising the way we would normally. Because I think if we start pulling punches, the, the only exception the only exception to that is that um, the written, accept, uh, the written ex, uh, request for an extension, our policy is that there needs to be a letter accompanied by the certificate of approval that they got originally and a $75 fee for administrative costs in putting them on the agenda. And so that that's the only exception to the full fees. I think when it's a full, that's just for an extension of that already gotten approval, it hasn't expired. Okay. That would be the only exception to that. Otherwise, I think any application to the board, you know, once it's withdrawn and reapplied, be, it's got to be the full full boat again. We have to send the notices out. We have to advertise it the same way with, we do um, anytime. I don't think we'd want to start playing uh, yeah. playing with that process too that's much. That's wise advice. Um, I think that's, that's my counsel. Counting. But for next time, Karen and I will work on getting some answers to some of those questions. They're valid questions, and I think we ought to have some guidance um, from legal on what that should look like. And if, if appropriate, then I think we ought to propose some amendments <coughs> if that's the process. I would ask the board to propose an amendment to extend the approval to a year. Twelve months. And if you'd like, we can do that uh, right now. Uh, I'll move that we make that request to the ordinance committee to look at this ordinance and extend the approval for one year. Do I have a second? I second that. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous, so that's makes it easier. So I'll take care of that. I, 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 do, you, do you want to do it now, too? We can work on this. Right, we'll I'll draft something up for Thank you. Thank you. That'd be awesome. Great. I love the way this board, this board seems to be running very comfortably right now, except for me using the wrong sheet. Yes. Um, <laughs> have we have we moved on to zoning board comments? Not yet. Okay. Uh, that's the next uh, section. You're up for that, yeah. so uh, feel free to your comments. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to shorten any. Oh yeah, sure. We'll start with you. Okay. I just wanted to on on that last note. It's a great segue into next month. I understand that two members have conflicts, and so we are down to four members for next month's meeting, and I know that we have <coughs> already, I think, there's at least two appeals, if not more. And um, so I, I'm just, you know, frantically begging to make sure that we have four, okay, four okay. members. I suspect I may be out. I may have to go to Michigan. Because you were one of them, right? Okay. You were I, one. I don't know if I was one of them. And Mr. Herbert, you were the other. Uh, Hebert. Hebert, yeah. I'm sorry. Hebert was yeah. the other one. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, wait, Mr. Richard. Okay, so we don't have. So we don't have a quorum. Okay. So that uh, makes that easier. Uh, so it was on Tuesday, November 10th. Yeah. If we get a week later, I'm available a week later. November 17th, or the, two, the Wednesday? Any, well, I'm just putting that out there. I'm available any time the following the the Wednesday. That Wednesday would be the, the uh, council meeting. I mean, oh, yeah. If it was a Tuesday, I could be shoot for that Tuesday, Brian, the 17th. Because planning board would be on a Monday, right? Um, hang on, i got to pull the calendar up just for one second. I'm, I, I'm a visual. See the problem this creates? It's it's mm. it's not as, I mean, I'm not coming down on anybody yeah. here, but it, it, it's incredible. This room is, these facilities are booked. They're booked. And just to try to get an, an alternate date is incredibly difficult. So Monday it would creates be. creates incredible problems. And then, 
you start to push that 20th of the month deadline for submissions oh, yeah. from uh, other people, mm -hmm. it, it just creates a wrinkle. If any, if at all possible, if you can go begging, crawling, if you need me to write a letter to your boss, if you need me to threaten your boss, <laughs> I would be happy to do I it. Most of you are your boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't understand how come you're not in charge of your schedule. Because <laughs> we're the boss. It's, it's I, great to be I, Again, I feel bad. <laughs> you guys are volunteering your time. I really appreciate that. You're a good bunch of uh, people. You, you're smart. You ask good questions. You do, do a great job. I want you to be here on the second Wednesday of the month. <laughs> That's okay. all I ask. Can I ask a question? Um, uh, is there any of the chairman, okay. I don't have control of this board. Can I ask a question? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody who has conflict for like November 3rd, 4th? I've, I've gone that whole week. Okay. 17th or 19th because I, I have to, to have to have a couple options. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's better for me. 17th, 17th or the 19th? Yeah. Okay. So we may have to just extend the submissions from the 20th to the following. So just it's going to be awful close to election. 17th, 18th, and 19th are fine. Yeah, oh, that's a good, that's a good point. We may not be able to get this room. Thanksgiving, you run into, I mean, November's a tough enough month as it is. Okay, yeah. election's I'll do my best, and I'll, I'll, I'll do tomorrow. You can't extend the uh, deadlines, though, because we have, we have a date that we need to. Right, and we. So are you Matt, looking, or Karen, you're looking at um, the, the 17th? The 17th or the 19th. I have to have a couple options when I go into that calendar. Okay, I will so email that's a, you. Because Monday is planning board, so Tuesday's a possibility. Wednesday is town council, so I was doing the Tuesday and Thursday to see if I could get. The Probably program. Thursday would be better for me that I can. Are you available all that week oh, that I'll respond? Yeah, I'll check yeah, my email. It's just you don't know until you know. Well, I don't want the rock up Ryan, so I'll make whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll look tomorrow. Why can't we do it on the second Wednesday again? Why can't we do it on the second Wednesday again? Close. Veterans Day. Oh, right. So we moved it to the Tuesday. Yeah. Right, yeah. Then I'm not going to be. What about the, uh, what about that Thursday, the 12th? Uh, Jim is out of town. You're out of town. I'm out of town. Okay. 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 All right. So we're, we're, we're looking at the following week. The 17th or the 19th, I'm going to look at. Okay. James, are you, are you back, are you uh, back that next week? I am back the Tuesday, the 17th, okay. not Thursday, the 19th. Tuesday the 17th. You would be around so the 17th. Okay. The 17th Tuesday, I will be. Okay. Here. You won't be around the 19th. No. Okay. I'll, I'll just have to look tomorrow and see what's available. Well, stay tuned to your emails. Yeah. And we'll, 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 we'll bring out a few dates that might be possibilities okay. to, to get it. The only reason I've been working with uh, one of the appellants that will be um, submitting for next month, and she's. she's she needs to break ground if possible this year, and it's a, I think it's going to be a limited reduction of yard size. I can't remember. A limited reduction of yard size or a practical difficulty. And, and to put her off to December basically is going to kill her project. Have and it's, it's an in-law in necessity kind of thing. I think no, it I has a relatively good it. chance of getting past. If she has to wait till December, it may not work well. So it's really important to hear it next month, and even backing it up a week could be pretty detrimental. So that's why, that's just one reason. Yes, you care. Wow. I try to do my best. You know. <laughs> okay. He's putting on a front. And it's not just because of that, but that's, you know, people are depending on that schedule. Sure. And, and when you start backing it off two or three weeks, it makes a difference. It's so. change that holiday. Yeah. Um, I believe you guys received an email from Mr. Longstaff regarding the workshop for MMA. No. So if anyone would like to attend, let me know, because I'm going to be going and uh, another planning board member so far. Is that the 30th? It's the 29th. But again, that's a rehash from what most of us have just gone through in the last yeah, year. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's local, I believe. It is. It's South idea. Portland. They do offer, MMA offers it approximately five to six times a year. This is a local one. It's the last one for the year. I think I'm going to do that one. Okay. Yeah. Is it the 29th, Karen? I'll look at it in my uh, email. It is because Halloween's on Saturday, and it's that Thursday before, so it's the 29th. Okay. 
So if you can let me know, I'll, I'll send an email out uh, towards the middle of next week because I want to go online and sign everybody up um, that Friday or Monday. Just trying to get us, make sure we have spots. So. If you've hey, gone within the last year or two, it's probably going to yeah, feel pretty rehashy, but um, they do cover any statutory changes that have occurred uh, from session to session. So if you think, no, I'm not sure that any have occurred, but it's always kind of good in the questions um, that get asked by other people are sometimes helpful for you to hear their questions and, and hear the answers. So it's, it's never, I've gone to several of them sometimes in the same year uh, in the past, and I always get something out of it. When they talk about variances, just get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Chair, I have a question. That kind of just um, about your whole comment. At, <laughs> at maybe at the beginning of next year, like in January, if we could uh, maybe just an internal email to all of us, just showing a schedule, that way we could anticipate any uh, Veterans Day conflicts. It's oh, always the second. It is always. It's always the second, unless it's special. Except when yeah, it's on. I, I can well, send you something. Yeah, I, w I would appreciate that. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, well, what's I, the date? I'll just list out the date. Yeah. Does that work? Because okay. yeah, I work in all the public holidays, sure. unfortunately. Yeah. Any other uh, comments from board members? None. I think that uh, does it. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Have a great night.